Hello! Welcome to Best of the Best, Playing with Power series where we rate the top cards, decks, sets, and much more from a CEDH perspective. CEDH is a very different animal than EDH. The biggest difference is their gameplay focus. In EDH, you typically want to do a certain thing, leave people with certain image or feeling, play your favorite tribe, and so on. In CEDH, the focus of gameplay is winning at any cost. With this shift in focus comes many more subtleties and nuances than one would normally expect. In this video, we are going to discuss the five things we consider essential when building decks for CEDH. We're also going to briefly break down these essentials and provide examples of things to look for. From there, research will be your best friend. If you're looking to buy any of the cards mentioned today, be sure to check out our list in the description. Also, if you like this video and you wanted to help out, give us a like and consider subscribing and ringing the bell to be notified of new videos as they come out. Tonight's episode was brought to you by Patreon. No, really, our Patreons actually helped with this episode. We got our patrons together and we all came up with tonight's topic as well as the details. If you want to help us on our next Best of the Best, be sure to sign up to Patreon. So, let's dive right in. Number 5 on today's list is Stacks and Disruption. While in EDH there is typically a stigma against stacks, they are usually welcomed and often needed to survive in CEDH. First, we have general, catch-all stacks pieces. These usually affect multiple aspects of the game and greatly hinder opponents' ability to push forward. These are cards like Drenith Magistrate, Hull Breacher, Opposition Agent, Deafening Silence, and Trinosphere. These are all very powerful and hinder opponents from progressing their game plans. As we continue down this list, you'll understand why these are important. Next, there are area-specific stacks pieces. These typically affect fewer zones or aspect of a game, but are still very powerful. Graveyard Hate helps prevent reanimator strategies and commanders like Kess from executing their primary game plans. Cards like Tormod's Crypt, Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, and Graph Digger's Cage all help fight these strategies. Stopping activated abilities of creatures will slow down decks with Man of Dorks and Thrasios alike. Curse Totem, the Tabernacle of Pendril Veil, Humility, and Linvala Keeper of Silence are all great at combating creature-based strategies. Artifact Hate prevents opponents from using all of the expensive fast mana they run to accelerate them towards their win. Cards like Null Rod, Collector Oof, and Blind Obedience are typically must-answer cards for artifact-based decks like Brea and Urza. Land Hate is essential to hurt the greedy, multicolored mana bases that nearly all CDH decks run. Winter Orb, Blood Moon, and Back to Basics can stop most decks in their tracks and make it even more difficult to find a way out of that situation. Next on our list at number 4 is Win Conditions. You might think that this is the most important thing in CDH since the focus is on winning. While winning is the goal, it is not the most important element of deck building. There are a few types of win conditions. First, there are A plus B combos. These work by getting two cards together and having the outcome be a game winning combo. The most popular of these is the Thassa's Oracle and either Tainted Pact or Demonic Consultation. Others include Dualcaster Mage plus Twin Flame, Walking Ballista plus Heliod the Suncrown, or Kiki Jiki plus Felidar Guardian. Other A plus B combos won't win you the game outright, but will greatly shift the balance of power in your favor. Things like a Wheel Effect and a Wheel Effect Payoff, or Yisan plus Trinosphere, or Thrasios plus Seedborn Muse fit here wonderfully. Another A plus B combo is Dramatic Reversal imprinted onto Isochron Scepter. Since this doesn't win the game by itself, you need an outlet to go with this. Anything that you can sink mana into, or something that tracks storm count will work here. Some good choices are Thrasios, Aetherflux Reservoir, Kennen, or Brea. Another powerful win condition is with combat damage. Some decks take a more traditional route when winning with combat, such as Edric, Yuriko, or full-on stack stacks. Other decks will aim to get an infinite combat damage. These decks could pump their team with Finale of Devastation, or go for additional combat phases like Najila or Godo. Each of these decks have their own methods and are some of the best decks in the format. Coming in at number 3 on our list is Interaction and Utility. Simply put, Interaction wins games. If everyone built their decks to go immediately for a win, one person with disruption would come out on top. This is because they can stop their opponents from executing their fast win and then execute their win afterwards. The places where people tend to interact with problem cards are either on the stack or on the battlefield. Counterspells can help prevent problem cards from ever resolving and is usually the easiest and safest way to handle things. Cards like Force of Will, Mana Drain, Deflecting Swat, and Red Elemental Blast are great low mana cost options. 
Unfortunately, not every deck has access to counter spells. This is where permanent based interaction comes in handy. Interacting with problem permanents is very important. Cards like Assassin's Trophy, Chain of Vapor, and Veil of Summer can help protect your board and disrupt your opponent's boards. Silence and Angel's Grace are great ways to prevent a player from executing their combo for a turn. Removal and interaction are crucial to disrupting opponent's game plans. Next up at number two is Resource Advantage. Getting ahead of your opponents in resources is one of the best things you can do in CEDH. Everything from drawing more cards to having more mana will put you very far ahead. Consistent, ongoing draw engines will typically get you the most bang for your buck. Cards like Mystic Remora, Ristic Study, Dark Confidant, and Necropotence continue to provide additional cards as the game goes on, giving you more options to go for a win or look for crucial interaction. Another source of additional cards are wheel effects such as Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, and Windfall. While these effects affect each player equally, refilling your empty hand is much better when your opponent's hands are already full. Mana is another important resource. Mana rocks are very important to every CEDH deck, but ongoing or explosive sources of additional mana are just as potent. Dockside Extortionist has found a home in just about every red CEDH deck. This is because most decks play tons of artifacts and enchantments, which Dockside capitalizes on. This is what makes him the best ritual effect in the format. Another powerful source of additional mana is Smothering Tide. Every player will be drawing at least one card every turn, and with their card draw engines it could be much more. Smothering Tide puts a heavy tax on those types of cards, and will likely make your opponents choose not to draw the extra cards from it. Finally, Mana Dorks push you ahead an additional turn. Arbor Elf, Elvish Mystic, Noble Hierarch, Elves of Deep Shadow, and Birds of Paradise all provide valuable mana and even color fixing all throughout the game. They can even help protect your life total and provide available sacrifice sources for tutor and ritual spells. Of course, for every type of resource advantage there is, there is a way to counteract that. While additional creatures, mana, and cards are great, every player is looking to get as much as they possibly can. That's why there needs to be cards that take those resources away. Cards like Toxic Deluge, Armageddon, Vandal Blast, and the aforementioned stacks pieces we mentioned earlier all help to greatly combat our opponent's greediness. Finally, coming out on top of today's list is card selection. The only thing better than getting more cards than your opponents is the ability to filter through those cards to find the cream of the crop. Cantrips are cards that replace themselves after use and are nearly free slots in your deck. Cards like Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, Jetaxian Probe, and Opt I'll let you see multiple cards, then replace itself. Top deck manipulation is another way of filtering through cards. These cards will always draw you additional cards, but give you the chance to dig a bit deeper into your deck to find something more useful. Cards like Sensei's Divining Top, Sylvan Library, Scroll Rack, Miri's Guile, and Limduel's Vault all make top decking a little bit easier. Finally, the best way to find the cards that you're looking for is to go straight for them with Tutor Spells. Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, Mystical Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, Gamble, and Worldly Tutor all find you the exact cards you need to close out the game. So what does this all mean when we put all five of these together? Throughout a game, we'll need specific cards, either to help us win or to disrupt an opponent's win. If the card is really important, we'll need to tutor for that card. Outside of tutoring for a card, we'll need to draw as many cards as we can to increase our chances of getting it. We'll also need to make as much mana as we can so we can keep snowballing our resources. While we're doing these things, our opponents are as well. We include interaction to slow down our opponents from being greedy and also keep us from dying. Our win conditions are usually compact card packages, so we'll assemble them as we try to speed through the game. This whole time, it greatly benefits us to play stacks pieces to shut out our opponents out of doing much of anything. Well, there you have it. This is what we consider the essentials of CEDH deck building. How much you have of each of these elements will change from deck to deck, but they are all in there in some way. For example, all-in combo decks tend to stay away from stacks in favor of card selection and resource advantage, but will still run things like Defense Grid to protect our combo turn. On the other end of the spectrum, disruptive decks lean heavier into interaction and stacks, but won't exclude resource advantage and card selection spells. This balancing act is forever ongoing and will likely never be truly finished, if you will. It also doesn't take into consideration what a person is thinking about 
during a game of CEDH. Look out for that in a future video, or check out our Intro to CEDH playlist in the meantime. So what do you think? What would be your top 5 deck building essentials for CEDH? Is there anything we missed? What would you consider to be a deck building essential? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It lets us know we're giving you the content you love. If you want to see more like this, consider subscribing to stay updated. If you would like to help us out further and get some awesome perks in return, consider signing up to our Patreon. We have recently added new exciting Patreon goals and amazing tiers, including a new limited tier that allows you to be on an episode of Playing With Power. Check out the link in the description. Well that about wraps it up for this episode of Best of the Best. Tune in next time when we attempt to assemble the best lists for our favorite format, CEDH. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you.